Hello, good afternoon. I guess good morning for those of you on the West Coast. I see some familiar names, but also some new names. So hi, I'm Lizzie Garner. If you are um, joining us for the first time, or if you are potentially from outside the organization, if you wanna send me a quick kind of, uh, it's in your questions box, but I was about to say, send me a chat. Um, is it your first time? Where are you calling in from? Is it just this topic today? You're thinking, I've gotta figure out how to actually be able to, to set some boundaries. Is that important for all of you? Ah, hello, Monica, welcome. And your first time because you're you're new. Well, welcome, welcome and welcome. Welcome to the company and welcome to Grow, our um, first monthly webinar with you. Um, Brenda, there's Brenda who's saying she can't hear, but it sounds like most of you can. Can you, let's see. It's possible. Okay. Let's see if we can figure that um, audio issue out. But um, so for those of you who, again, joining us for the first time, let me know where you're where you're joining from. And then anyone. Oh, Marianne, Marianne, welcome as well. First time from Angie too. good. Lots of good. Evelyn, Evelyn, thank you. Denise said I was invited by Evelyn and Evelyn is always such a participant. Evelyn, I appreciate you're always so engaged in, in our topics, but I love that Denise said, no, but I like this topic. I think this topic is incredibly important and what you're all going to love most is that our speaker today is not just going to tell you how important boundaries are, but how. How are you going to do this? Because I think many of you would say like, yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm here, I want. I, I know it's important, that's why I showed up. I need to know how I'm actually going to do it. So Angie said, yes, I need the, I need the how. Perfect. Tony, oh, Tony by O'Hare. Well, we will listen for the planes, Tony, in your, in your area. We love that you're joining us often. We are so lucky so many of you are investing this time in yourself this, this hour. It's always hard to get away and be able to do it, but I love that um, you've all chosen today to, to take that hour invested in yourself, make you better both here and, and personally. It's a topic that transforms kind of all of your, your experiences. So without further ado, you get to hear from me every month. I do want to introduce um, Carissa Carner. She is a certified Clinny coach, a world-class speaker coach. She's been on this TEDx stage. Hello, oh, I'm saying someone's deciding to call me during it. Um, helping women on a number of topics. This is certainly an important one, but there are many things that Carissa speaks about. So as much as I would love to talk to you all for the hour, Carissa is the one with the topic that you all showed up for. So Carissa, I'll let you take it from here. Thank you so much, Lizzie. And good morning or good day, depending on where you're calling in from. I'm just thrilled to be here with you to talk about how to empower yourself with personal and professional boundaries. So before we officially start, I want to make sure you can access the handout. So there's a handout that you can use. You don't have to flip through it as you're listening. You certainly can. And some of what I talk about today will be there in the handout so you can take that home with you. And uh, Lizzie or Ella, if you could put the link in the chat, that would be so helpful. So that way you can access it with the QR code on your phone or you can go on your laptop with the link, whatever's easiest for you. And now, oops, my slides are going ahead of me. Okay, so I have a question for you to start off with. Do you ever wish there were more hours in the day? And do you ever wish that you could take better care of yourself, but there just isn't time? So now, we're going to put up a poll. So Ella, if you don't mind putting this poll up, would you like to have more hours in the day? So this will help us all get a temperature read of where you're at. Is this something that would be valuable to you? Would you like to have an extra 24 hours or at least an extra few hours? Or do you feel like, nah, my days are just right? This will help Carissa, me. I love, I love that they couldn't wait for the poll of yes or a few. They all just started chatting in. Yes, yes. Every day, all day, more, more. <laughs> I have to say, Jessica, you're the first one I've seen that says, actually, I could use a few less hours in it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I could use less. So if you are a fan of Jessica's, put it in the, 
chat or put it in the um, poll here. A few extra hours would be nice. Nah or yes. I, I, I'm going to guess if, if I had to, Carissa, this is going to be a landslide for yes if I use the chat uh, in the, the chat. Uh, that's that's helpful to know. And that was my that was my hunch. And I, I wanted to share with you, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, yeah. so 14% said I need an extra 24 hours, but 75% <laughs> said a few extra hours would be nice. Yeah, so that's the general consensus is that at least a few extra hours to get everything done. And I, I just wanted to share with you too, Lizzie and I spoke on Monday in preparation for this talk today, and she shared with me about how people on the outside say to her all the time, wow, how do you do everything? And she said, Carissa, it's because of boundaries. And actually because of boundaries, I, I don't do everything. And I just thought that was so impactful. And so I wanted to share that. I wanted to share that with you about how Lizzie uses boundaries to be able to do all that she does. I can't hear you, Lizzie. Thank you, because I was muted. Huh. I don't typically chime in in the middle of these, but I think that Chris is making a great point. So often, those of you who join will say things in the chat to me like, oh, I don't know how you do everything though. Your schedule's so busy. You, you run a bunch of things here. And I said to Carissa, I, this topic is so important to me because it is actually how I'm able to be more productive is that I don't do everything. I have pretty strict boundaries and I try very hard to keep my team empowered to keep strong boundaries. So I had mentioned to Carissa that I was happy for you all to start to get some of the tools on, on how. How can you say no how can you not have to take on everything but still somehow in the end people think i'm doing everything and more of things and i i'm excited to see how krista can help you get there for for those of you saying but lizzie she does look like she's doing everything it's actually boundaries that are a big key to how our team my team and myself can be more productive so excited thank you thank you for sharing that yeah and what stands out to me in that is when you do less, you can do more. It's really powerful. And I wanna share a, a story just with a little vulnerability to start off here so that you know that, you know, I'm not sitting here on my pedestal of like, oh, I've got perfect boundaries everywhere, but I'm a work in progress. And it's okay if you are too, that we can all be, show up here as works in progress. So if you were with me just about a month ago, uh, you would have seen it was a weekend for me when I was feeling completely overwhelmed. So I run two businesses. I'm a public speaking coach and I also have a, a private practice as a psychotherapist. And this was one of those weekends when there was more to do than I could possibly fit into two days. Have, have you ever been there? <laughs> so you would have seen me on the Saturday. I was in my car, uh, I was driving, my husband's next to me, and we were driving on our way to see my accountant. And my husband loves to go see my accountant in person. Uh, he's a friend of ours, so he loves to go in person, even though, you know, we could go by Zoom. And even though my accountant is an hour and a half away each way. And so on this weekend, instead of just saying, you know, hon, it'd be great if we could reschedule to a Zoom meeting, I just went along with it. I didn't use my voice, I didn't say anything. And if you looked at me on the outside, you would have thought, ah, oh, Carissa, she's calm, cool, and collected. But on the inside, it was chaos inside. I was panicking. And I started to share with my husband all the things that I needed to accomplish that weekend. And as I shared them, you know, the calm facade started to crack. And uh, it was like panic started seeping out of my pores, you know, like steam. And my husband, he, he, he paused me and he said, uh, you know, hun, you don't have to do everything yourself. I'm right here. And I just looked at him like, I don't understand. What are you talking about? He said, I can help you. <laughs> oh, and inside I thought, that sounds so nice. I would love some help. And with my outside voice, you know what I said? I said, you know, you just don't get it. It took a while for it to sink in, but finally, I'm a slow processor sometimes, but finally I realized, oh my gosh, he's right. I mean, he's telling me there's help available right here, but I'm not speaking up to ask for it. 
I'm not setting any boundaries and I'm, I'm just taking everything on myself. So I wonder, have you ever been there? So this reminds me of uh, the words of psychologist, Dr. Doug Weiss, who said that stressed is when I decided to take care of others at the expense of myself. I'll say that again. When I decided to take care of others at the expense of myself. So as a professional, you know, so often you take on and 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 then you think, oh my gosh, I'm drowning. I better do some self-care. And then, oh, self-care, it becomes just another burden that you feel like you should do. Have you ever felt that way? You know, it's no like perfectly scented candle or lovely pedicure is going to help lift the weight of all those burdens. But today you'll discover how to start unloading some of those burdens by practicing the radical self-care tool of creating boundaries between your work life and your personal life and speaking up for yourself so that you can feel less stress and more peace and more in charge of your life. So we'll uncover the three steps to creating healthy boundaries. So one, you'll get clarity on what boundaries are. Two, you'll learn the signs that will tell you when you need a boundary. And three, you'll get some practical tools that you can start using right now, today, so that you can find more balance between your work life and your personal life. So how does that sound to you? Okay, so we're going to start by going on a journey together. So imagine, in your mind's eye right now, just imagine, imagine the most beautiful garden. It has all your favorite flowers. It has vibrant greenery, or maybe it has some Gerber daisies, maybe uh, bluebells, poppies, whatever flowers you love. This is your perfect garden. It can be as big and as lush as you want it to be. In fact, if it's okay with you, just close your eyes as long as you're not driving listening to this. Close your eyes if that's comfortable and envision that perfect garden. And maybe there's even some lovely stone paths or a pond with koi in it. Just let your imagination run wild. And you can imagine yourself meandering through the flowers and the greenery, or maybe sitting down, maybe there's a bench or a swing and you're sitting in it. And you can even smell the smells, just breathe in the smell of the flowers and the earth and the greens. Great. And this garden is something you've created. You planted every seed and watered every plant you tended to all the plants and flowers. You fertilized them and nurtured them and made sure that you know, no bugs came and ate them, no deer came and nibbled on them. This is your garden. Great, so really picture it. And now, now imagine that surrounding your beautiful, wonderful garden is absolutely nothing. It's not protected at all. Anything can come in. You know, bugs can fly in and nibble on the leaves or deer can come in and, and chomp your plants and your flowers. The kids, the neighbor kids can just come and, and trample all over everything or pick flowers, a bouquet for mom and people, neighbors can come in and out as they please. But notice how that feels. Just take note of the emotions and the sensations inside of you bookmark them. And now you're going to let it go. So take a nice deep breath and sigh it out and just come back to sitting and enjoying your garden, sitting or walking through, enjoying your beautiful garden. And now imagine that instead of nothing surrounding your garden, there is a fortress wall. It's a stone wall, it goes as high as the eye can see and nothing is getting in and nothing is getting out. There is no doubt that your garden is protected. It's so well protected 
that you're all alone in there and no one can enjoy it except for you. No one can see the beauty. No one can smell the smells. No one can even talk to you, but your garden is very safe. So notice now how that feels. Again, notice the emotions inside, the body sensations that you feel, and bookmark it. And then just let that fortress wall disappear. Take another nice deep breath, inhale, and sigh it out. Ah. Enjoy your garden. And now surrounding your garden is a strong, solid fence. Now this fence is very well built. It's just the right height. You can see over it and people can see in. It's even nice to look at and it keeps the pests out. In fact, it keeps everyone out that you don't invite in. It has gates so that you can open them and invite your loved ones or your favorite people to come and enjoy the garden with you. You can look over the fence and say hi to people and others can enjoy the beauty. So notice now how that feels. Notice the emotions and sensations and bookmark it. And now think back to all three. We'll do another poll here. Which boundary or fence or no fence did you prefer? Did you like no fence at all? Did you prefer the fortress wall? Or did you prefer the strong, well-built friends? And as you're thinking about it, if you find that, you know, I kind of felt like I liked all three, <laughs> that's normal. That's normal. We often have many different kinds of boundaries that show up in our life. So as we're Just waiting... another couple of, of minutes here. I think a few of you are like, ooh, yes, in between. But wait, which, which, one, which one do you think about? what you want to build for your, for yourself, for your, for your own yard. Yeah. And just getting a sense of it. So there's no right or wrong here, no judgment. You're just noticing, you know, notice, noticing what feels more comfortable to you. And that's going to help you as we go through, I'm going to explain more about what, what each one of these is and how it might be showing up in your life. So this is just for you to get that, that taste in on the inside of what it feels like to have these different kinds of boundaries. Okay, Ella, I think we've got them. Let's see. Ah. Okay. Yes, so most of you really preferred that strong, well-built fence. And there are some of you that, that did prefer the fortress wall and some that preferred no fence at all. And so just notice that. And I'll share more about what that means as we go on. And you might have heard the quote. Have you heard this quote, good fences make good neighbors? So that is... It's attributed to a Robert Frost poem, but as far as we know, it's been around, that saying has been around since the 17th century. And even Benjamin Franklin was thought to have said, love thy neighbor, yet don't pull down your hedge. <laughs> so the concept of boundaries has been around for centuries. And you know, the fence in the quote, the fence around your garden, and the hedge that Benjamin Franklin talks about, of course, those are all metaphors for boundaries. And a way to simply think about it is that the definition of boundaries is the limits and rules that we set for ourselves within relationships. So you might have noticed that as you thought about your perfect garden, that, you know, not just any fence is the way to set your boundary. You know, no fence might not be ideal but a fortress wall may not be ideal. So think about those fences in your own life. So expand it out now, thinking about your whole life. And do you ever, do you ever let your garden get trampled on? Do you ever wall people out? And are there places where you build those good, strong fences that you do have those healthy boundaries that protect you and give you the choice of who and what to let in? how you spend your time, your energy. So in the psychotherapy world, we have names for these three types of boundaries. Diffuse boundaries, that's like having no fence or a dilapidated fence. Rigid, which is like the fortress wall. And healthy boundaries, that's that strong, secure fence. So notice what patterns you see with the boundaries in your own life. 
So you might notice that there are more diffuse boundaries. That's where you may let people walk over you or you feel like you have to over caretake everyone. Maybe you feel like it's difficult to make decisions for yourself, that you have to go to others to help you make a decision or even decide for you. Or maybe you're over involved in other people's lives. You might find that it's hard to know where you end and another person begins. So just notice if those boundaries show up in different places in your life. And you might find that in some places you have more rigid boundaries. So that's where you have a rigid rules, restrictions. You might be very private or protective with walls around your emotions. Maybe you don't let anyone in. Um, or maybe you notice that you tend to be very controlling in certain situations. So those are all examples of rigid boundaries. And then you might find you do have a lot of healthy boundaries. So that's when you have a strong sense of self, a strong sense of who you are, your own opinions and needs. You don't over caretake others. You take responsibility for your part in things. Um, you can also be flexible without losing your sense of self, without losing that sense of who you are. And you know where you end and another person begins. So those are all examples of healthy boundaries. So just noticing how, how that shows up in your life. So you might notice, as I said before, that you have a combination of different boundaries in different places, and that's just human. You might also notice that, you know, you have, say, more rigid boundaries at work and more diffuse or more healthy boundaries at home or vice versa. So different boundaries may show up in different places. That's all normal too. <laughs> so would you like to be able to build good fences. When you build those good, strong fences, those healthy boundaries, you will have the ability to ask for what you want and need. You'll have a strong sense of who you are and you can take charge of your own life. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> so right now, you might be thinking, yes, Carissa, it does sound good, but tell me how, how do I create those healthy boundaries? <laughs> if you're thinking that right now, well, it makes a lot of sense to me because it's not as easy as just building a fence. You need to know where to build the fence. You need to know what materials you need and, and how you even construct it. So would you like to know those things? Well, stick with me and we're gonna go through all of that. So first I wanna ask you, who do you think is the best teacher when it comes to boundary setting? And you can think about in your own life, who's the best teacher for you? Uh, you can share in the chat, who's a good teacher for you on setting boundaries? And as you think about that, I'll tell you who the best teacher I know is, and that is my cat, Lily. <laughs> this is her in her regal glory. Now, just the other day, I sat down to eat my lunch and I, I had a sandwich. And just as I picked it up, I heard this meow. And I looked down and then it was meow, 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 meow. If you have a cat, you may understand what that means. If you don't, I'll translate. She said, pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me, pet me right now. Pet me, pet me, pet me. <laughs> and I knew that, that was going to continue if I didn't put my sandwich down and pet the cat. And what I noticed is that Lily was very vocal and very clear about what she wanted and needed. And she didn't sit quietly in a corner thinking, oh, I wish Carissa would pet me. You know, if she was a good pet owner, she would read my mind and know that I want to be pet right now. She didn't do that. But have you ever had an expectation that someone should read your mind and know what you want? I know I have. But she didn't make it a secret. And as I reached down to pet Lily, it reminded me of a time in my own life about 15 years ago. I was in my early 30s and I was not good at setting boundaries. Now, at that time, oh, this is, <laughs> that that's not me, but that's kind of how I felt. It's like, boundaries, what are those? And at that time, I was taking this yoga teacher training course. And we had a master teacher come in to talk to us about yoga philosophy. His name was Robert Bierenberg. He was this very adorable man, kind of short with curly salt and pepper hair. And he had this twinkle in his eye, like he was constantly laughing at a joke that only he knew. And he started talking to us. 
about yoga philosophy, which I discovered was all about self-care, communication, and boundary setting. Who knew? None of these things had I ever really learned about yet at that point in my life. I mean, I was already in my early 30s, but I didn't know how to do these things. And during that same time, I was going through a separation with my first husband. We had a relationship built on diffuse boundaries. Those were the non-existent fence boundaries. And neither one of us knew where one ended and the other began. And at the time, I was actually feeling guilty for going through with the separation, even though I had just found out about his second affair. And what was happening was that I felt bad for taking care of myself. Have you ever been there? Have you ever felt that way? So here I was in this yoga philosophy class with Robert Berenberg with the twinkle in his eye. And he starts talking about how the yoga sutras of all things and, and how they tell you that it's important to speak up for yourself, but find the balance between being honest and kind. So he was talking about effective communication and boundary setting. And one of the other students raised his hand and he said, okay, but what do you do when someone isn't honest and kind to you. And I thought, oh, I know what that feels like. <laughs> and Robert Berenberg, he looked out at us and he said, you have to teach people how to treat you. And my head practically exploded. And I thought, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I'm supposed to teach people how to treat me? It never occurred to me that that was my job, that my job was not to read minds. My job was not to take responsibility for other people's emotions and fix them. My job was not to just put on a pleasant face and say yes to everything, that it was my job to teach people how to treat me, to figure out what I wanted and needed, to speak up for myself and say, no, that doesn't work for me. So what do you think about that? Now, what Robert was telling us that day is that you have to build your own fences. You can't expect anyone to build them for you. So what do you think it might be like to apply that idea to your own life that you have to teach people how to treat you? Well, here's what happens for many of the clients that I work with when they hear that. They feel empowered and they feel excited, and they feel totally overwhelmed. Are you feeling any of that? So learning that it's up to you to set your own boundaries, it's knowledge that can free you because it puts the power in your hands. And, you know, it also kind of sucks because ultimately that means you are responsible for taking care of yourself. And no one is going to take that lunch break for you. No one's going to lock your computer up on the weekend so you take a break <laughs> and no one is gonna to go to your boss for you and say i'd like to discuss a promotion it's up to you uh, in his book on boundaries henry cloud said we have our own thoughts and if we want others to know them we must tell them let me say that again <laughs> you have your own thoughts and if you want others to know them you have to tell them. So in other words, you have to speak up and set your own boundaries. So what can be hard sometimes is that you may not realize you need a boundary until it's too late. So often I've heard my clients say they didn't realize they needed a boundary until it was crossed way over the line. Does that ever happen for you? So wouldn't it be nice if there was a little signpost that would just pop up and say, boundary time, anytime you needed a boundary. <laughs> it's kind of like that little light that pops up on your car when you're running low on gas. Well, you may be happy to know there is a signpost inside. You just have to know what to look for. So would you like to know how to do that? All right, to test the theory, think back to a moment in time when you felt the emotion of resentment. So flip through the pages of your life and find a memory where you felt resentful. It doesn't matter if it's big or small, just think of one, even if it's a little bit of resentment. And once you get that memory, 
just notice, think about, was this a time when you needed a boundary to take care of yourself? And maybe you set the boundary, maybe you didn't. Try not to have any judgment. Just notice if you needed one. And let us know in the chat. You don't, you don't need to share the memory. Just let us know. Is In that memory when you felt resentment, could you have used a boundary? Or maybe did you set one? Just let us know. Because resentment seems to be one of the best signposts for when you need to set a boundary or when your boundary has already been crossed. Now, here are some other signposts that you can look for inside, just like your gaslight. So these are anger, irritation, fear, overwhelm, and of course, resentment, as we just talked about. So when you feel any of these emotions, what if you paid attention to them? What if you listen to them as the signpost that tells you yeah, something's not feeling right here, I need something to change, or this isn't okay for me, or maybe, you know, I think I'm, I'm taking on too much. These emotions are your warning signs. They're letting you know it's time to speak up. So what often happens is that people just react to these emotions. Either they'll push them away and ignore them, which ends up leading to resentment because your needs aren't being met, or they have a strong emotional reaction, like an explosion of anger or cutting off of a relationship, which unfortunately leads to more problems in the long run. So think about it for a minute. When your gaslight comes on in your car, what do you do? Hopefully you go get gas. You don't ignore the gaslight, or at least you don't ignore it for long, otherwise you'll be stuck on the side of the road. But you also, you don't blame the car for having an empty tank. You do something. You go get gas. You take care of the needs of your car. So these emotions are your signpost, just like your gaslight. So listen to them, respond to them, take care of yourself, just like you would take care of your car because those signposts are telling you it's time to speak up. So now you know how to recognize the signposts. Would you like a step-by-step -step guide to show you how to use them? Sound good? This is the TLC method, and I developed this to help you know what to do with those emotional signposts. So here's what you do. You tune in, you listen to yourself, and you communicate. So start by tuning in to those emotional signposts. Instead of ignoring them or reacting to them, just start by noticing like, oh, oh, there's some resentment coming up, huh? I wonder if I need a boundary. And then listen to yourself. So listen to the emotion and see it as your guide and see it as a guide to let you know that you need a boundary. And then ask yourself, what you want or need in the situation. And then listen again, listen to the answer. So you're spending time listening to yourself and then communicate. So then you can communicate effectively by speaking up about what it is you want or need in the situation. And we're gonna go deeper into how to communicate in just a minute. Then I wanted to share with you also that Lizzie was telling me about how she uses community to help her listen so that she checks in with people or she has people who check in with her. You know, something's not feeling right about this. I wanna set a boundary, but I'm not sure how. That's a form of listening too, of being in communi community and asking for input from other people or even developing what the, the, maybe the, the group or the company wants and needs and what those boundaries should be. So you don't have to do it alone. And it's vital that you listen to these emotions. So as I said, most people react to them or they ignore them without thinking. But when you tune in and listen, you have the choice to communicate effectively so that you can take care of yourself and you can teach people how to treat you. So, oh, and I forgot to show you my pictures. That's for listen and that's communicate. So we talked about what fences are, uh, what boundaries are with the fences analogy. And we looked at the diffuse, the rigid, and the healthy boundaries. Then we talked about how to teach people how to treat you by using TLC. And that's tune in, listen, and communicate. And now let's talk about how to communicate and how to practice 
the radical self-care tool of creating boundaries between your work life and your personal life so that you can feel in charge of your own life and you can feel less stress and more peace. Sound good? All right, so here's another few questions for you. Do you ever have a hard time letting work go? Do you ever take work home with you on the evenings or on the weekends? And I'm not talking once or twice. Do you do it on a regular basis? Do you ever find it hard to relax even when you're taking time off? So if you answered yes to any of these questions, you may find that it's hard to set boundaries between your work life and your personal life. And maybe it's because, you know, work is your livelihood. It involves how much money you make. Um, it might be because there are power dynamics at play. That can definitely play a role in this. Maybe you have a strong work ethic and it's just hard for you to emotionally let go and turn work off. But whatever the reason, it is so important that you give yourself a break with a boundary between your work life and your home life. So in 2020, there was a survey, it was conducted by Mental Health America and Flex Jobs, and they found 75% of workers said they had experienced burnout. 75% of workers experienced burnout. That is a huge number. And mental health issues related to the workplace, they're on the rise. They're over three times more now today than they were four years ago before the pandemic. So this tells us how important it is for you to carve out that time and take care of yourself. And not only will you feel better, but research tells us you'll perform better. 86% of employees polled said taking breaks makes them more productive. Do you feel that way too? Yeah, well, you are more than your job. You're more than your job. So as we go deeper into this, I first wanted to share with you some techniques from my community on Facebook of all places. Now I asked them how they create a boundary between their work life and their home life. And they had some great answers. Now you can see the whole discussion from this QR code. It's also in your handout. So don't feel like you have to go check it out now. You can do that at your leisure. And I'm gonna share with you a couple of the highlights. So these are some that stood out for me. One person said, I think you're going to love this. I think of my job as a one night stand, get what you need and go home. <laughs> Another person said that she asks herself two questions. One, if I do not do this right now, will somebody die? And two, if I do not do this right now, will somebody get sick? If the answer is no, there is no real emergency. And one person shared this about getting calls after hours. She said, if it's not urgent enough, I'm clear with them that they need to send me an email and I'll address the issue during my normal working hours. Very clear container around what work is. And somebody else said she likes to have a ritual and take a cold shower to wash away work stress when work is done. Now, this is one of my favorites. One person said clock in and clock out be where you are. So even if you don't have to clock in and clock out, what if you imagined yourself clocking out at the end of the workday? And when you clock out, you're off the clock. So what lots of people talked about was creating a ritual or a task that helped them make it clear that work is done and now you're in a different mode. You know, like taking a cold shower, putting devices into focus mode, clocking out. But here are some more ideas to help tell your brain and body that work is over for the day. And it's time for you to shift into a different mode. So that could be going for a walk. I'm taking a shower, cold or warm. <laughs> you can also mentally pack your work day into an imaginary container and put it on a shelf or imagine putting it in a closet. Uh, you can sing your favorite songs in your car as loud as you can, or simply just close your computer and put it away as a symbol to yourself that work is over. Just find something that, that works for you. It doesn't matter what it is. Think about, do you think something like that would help you? that help you shift between your work life and your personal life. Great, and also know that, you know, a ritual or a task like that is probably not gonna be enough in and of itself. It's helpful, but life involves other people and you have to talk to them in order to get your needs met. So there are going to be times when you need to speak up to set those boundaries. And typically setting boundaries, it involves asking for something, saying no or yes to something, 
or making a request. So if we go back to the TLC framework, so remember again, that's to tune in, tune into the signpost, listen to yourself, and then communicate your boundary. Now your communication will be most effective when you take that time to tune into the signpost, listen to what they are telling you and what your, your need or your want is, so that you don't get caught in that trap of reacting or ignoring that only makes things worse. So now here are three formulas for you to set a boundary effectively. Now, all three of these formulas are in your handout, so don't feel like you have to memorize them. You don't even have to write them down. You can just listen to get a sense of them and think about how you might use these tools, these formulas in your life when you're setting boundaries. So here's the first one. I need or want X, are you willing to Y? So here are some examples. You might say, um, I need some time to myself. Are you willing to watch the kids for two hours while I go to yoga? Or it could sound like this. Um, I need to attend a personal commitment on Wednesday morning. Are you willing to move our scheduled appointment time to later in the day? Or I need to make some changes to take care of my mental health. Are you willing to discuss keeping our communication to work hours? So those are some examples of how you might use them, but feel free to make it your own. Now, here's the next one. When you blank, I feel blank. Can you blank? And, you know, getting these formulas might feel a little stilted or weird, especially at first. So be patient with yourself if it's messy. Just do your best to follow the formula. It actually works. So here are some examples of this one. When you are late for our meetings, I feel frustrated. Can you let me know when you're running late? Or when you don't help with dinner, I feel overwhelmed. Can you take on making dinner two or three times a week? And it can also be positive. So you're also teaching people how to treat you when they do something that feels good to you. So you might say, when you ask me how my day was, I feel cared for and it really helps me unwind. Can you do that more often? And the third one, this is the classic, no. As Anne Lamont reminds us, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> so this might look like, no, I'm not available after 6 p.m. Or no, I don't work Sundays. Or no, I can't take on that project right now. So you don't need to explain it. It's okay to just say no. So these are ways that you can teach people how to treat you and speak up for yourself. So there are ways of being both honest and kind, just like Robert Bierenberg talked about. You're being honest about your want or need, and you're being kind because you're being direct. You're not asking someone to read your mind. Uh, you're not unconsciously erupting in anger, and you're not cutting off a relationship because you're scared to ask for what you want and need. It's honest and kind. So follow TLC, tune into the signpost, listen to yourself and communicate those boundaries effectively. So remember what they tell you when you fly on a plane, put your own oxygen mask on first. Because when you're taking care of yourself, you are better equipped to take care of those around you. When you use TLC to set those healthy boundaries, when you ask for what you want and need, when you take time for yourself away from work, you are putting your own oxygen mask on first. And that means setting boundaries is good for you and it's good for the people around you. You'll be more productive at work. You'll be more present at home. You'll be more able to take care of others and do what you do because you're taken care of, because you have your own oxygen mask on first. So here are a few areas where you might want to look at setting boundaries in your life. And we could go over each one of these, I'm sure, for a, a day. But just think about your time, your energy, your space your money or your fees, your belongings, your attention, and your affection. And I know that not all of you are women here, and many of you are. And if you're a woman listening to this, you may have been taught you know, not to ask for too much, that it's not okay to be bossy, you don't wanna look demanding, you don't wanna make waves. So setting boundaries by asking for what you want and need, it can feel edgy. It can even feel scary. I want to acknowledge that and know that if you feel that way, it's totally normal. This is, can be a stretch. It can be a new tool for you. 
And also remember that setting boundaries, it doesn't make you a selfish person or a needy person. It makes you a powerful person who can speak up for herself and take charge of her own life. All right, let's pause here and see if there are any questions and then we'll wrap up with just a little tidbit at the end. Yes, I'm going to join you back here on camera just a second because I do. There are a few that are saying, hey, wait, hey, wait a second. How, like, but I always feel like I have to give an explanation and mm. saying no doesn't feel like enough. But I think you might have given some examples of no, I'm not available after six. Maybe mm -hmm. the first step is shortening their explanation. <laughs> Maybe you can't go from like the long story to the no. Absolutely. That... I think that's a great idea of taking baby steps. You know, you don't have to go from, from one to a hundred. And that I think it's so common to feel like you need to explain, but you really don't. And in a way, when you explain, you're asking someone to be responsible for your why, and you're putting a burden on them, almost like, like if they know what's going on, then they can make the decision for you. But if you can own that decision, you know, this, this is my boundary is that I don't work after 6 p.m. And so if somebody says, hey, I need to have a meeting with you at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, you can say, oh, you know, I, I only work until six. After six, um, you know, that's, that's my personal time. Let's see if we can schedule it at a different time. That you don't have to go and, you know, I, I realized that it was, you know, really hard on my mental health and so I changed my boundary. Now you're starting to put this burden on the other person instead of just owning your decision and your boundary. Does that help? I, I think it does. I, I, Evelyn said, I think it's like asking for their approval that your reason is okay. So then you feel like you keep talking, but just know yes. I'm not available tomorrow after six yep. is the end of a sentence. Like that is the end of that went from like, because I have kids and I have to do all this. No, I'm not available tomorrow after six, but I am Thursday at 10. Like, I think the idea that if you want to keep talking, make it toward, <laughs> toward the alternate solution. Of, yes, of that. and that's that's great too, is that you can give alternate solutions. You know, no, I'm not available. I'm sorry, I'm not available at seven on Wednesday, but I am available at 10 on Thursday or 11 on Friday. How do those sound? Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. And, and I think that, uh, um, what, did, what did you say that that person said in the chat about taking uh, responsibility? It gives, yeah, like it, Evelyn had said that it gives, it's like asking for their approval that your reason is okay or that you're like, let me explain to you all the reasons why it's okay that I'm not versus owning your decision. Yes, Evelyn, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. That Then you're asking for their approval instead of owning it yourself. I love that. And I wanted to suggest too that you might just try it once with somebody who's safer. You know, so if there's somebody you're not as nervous about, saying no without an explanation to try it out try it out say it and then just close your mouth and see what happens <laughs> and try it out so that you can kind of like you're dabbling in this new skill and you don't have to feel like you have to go out and do it every time yet i love that i think you're getting to an, um, a question that someone else had had i think kathy had said i do feel scared about setting boundaries like i feel nervous about it like how will other people react Mm -hmm. when I'm when I'm doing that and then how, how, I think the second part of it was and how do I reteach them how to treat what if I've been going through this and just doing and ha I'm scared of how they'll feel and I want to reteach them what my boundaries are yes that's such a great point and it can be hard if you've been in relationship in one way and then suddenly you shift the other person may go huh what's happening this is different like you're setting boundaries now you you used to say yes to everything and you can always be very transparent and just say yeah i'm i'm working on setting better boundaries for myself and taking care of myself so you know you're right this does feel different that i am saying no when previously i would have said yes so like an example comes to mind of maybe you've always said yes to take someone to the airport and now suddenly you say oh you know i'm not available for that I'm like what and then they get angry you know on the one hand 
that emotion belongs to them. It's not yours to take on and to fix. And you can always, you know, that may be a time where you do offer that explanation of, you know, I hear that, that that's really affecting you. And I am working hard to take care of myself by setting these, these different boundaries. I love the idea that you're, again, part of teaching them how to treat you might be resetting with them. It might not just be that all of a sudden you start saying no to things or all of a sudden you aren't available because your idea is also not to make it seem like you're cold or not a part of them. I think your white strong fence was like, no, I'm still here and you can see me and you're there and it's a friendlier fence. I think that's how I, I like the idea that no, it, it's, I continue to find myself making trips to the airport and I always think in my head they'll take an hour and they always take at least two and I've got to set better boundaries. I love the idea that you're being clear about yes. the fact that you're doing a better job doing it. Yes. And that's, that's okay. That's okay. That's Exactly. And use those formulas. So that phrase, are you willing to, I find that that's like a magical phrase because what happens is that you're, you're giving the other person the option of saying yes or no, because you know, when you make these requests, even when you use the formula, you know, you don't know how the other person is going to respond. And it doesn't mean they have to say yes to your request. So when you say, are you willing to, you're giving them that permission to say yes and no, um, but you are taking responsibility for your ask. And so I think those formulas can be very helpful. Even that one of, you know, when you blank, I feel blank, can you blank? If you feel like you need to explain more, that's a great way to do it. You know, when you ask me for rides to the airport every week, I feel taken advantage of, you know, can you ask someone else this time? which may feel edgy. I mean, you are being very direct and you're owning your feelings, but you're also not taking on responsibility for somebody else's feeling. You are, you just hit on something that was a question. I think Evelyn had asked something similar that said, can we talk a bit about it's how to deal with the feeling of other people being disappointed that you've now said no and yeah. how to allow that to be okay. Like that is their, their thing, I think you just scratched when you said the surface of like, I can't, and then they get to decide what's their yeah. reaction to it, but that that's not yours. Yes, you said that was Ellen who said that? Um, Evelyn, yeah, Evelyn was like, I want, I think it's important to talk about when people are disappointed, how is that not my thing? Evelyn, you're so right. I think that that is the hardest part. And often that's what stops people from setting boundaries is that fear about how the other person is going to respond. And I think so many of us, especially if you are a woman listening or you identify as a woman, that we really have been taught that we're supposed to make sure everybody feels okay around us all the time. But what happens is then we feel like we're responsible for other people's emotions. And there is no way that you can be responsible for another person's emotions. It's theirs. And they may, they may be disappointed. They may um, be angry. They may be irritated. And that belongs to them. So I think a way to help with that is to come back to remembering, you know, when I take care of myself, like when I set these boundaries for myself, I am putting my own oxygen mask on first. And that I'm, I'm teaching this person that it's not okay to ask and ask and ask and ask for me, or, you know, that, that this, this thing that we've been doing is not working anymore for me. And eventually, you know, either the relationship, maybe, you know, it doesn't last, which might be important if that person is taking advantage of you or the relationship ideally is going to shift which means that you are teaching them how to treat you. And pretty soon, you know, you're not the person they call with an expectation that you're going to say yes to take them to the airport every time. But they may come to you, you know, every once in a while. And then you have the option of saying, oh, you know, I am actually available this week and I would be happy to take you. But that's the hardest part. You are absolutely right. It's, it's learning how to be okay, letting people have those emotions. I absolutely love it. Someone had written a kind of personal story about how 
this work isn't all like linear and easy. They had created a boundary and decided that they weren't going to continue to participate in the relationship the way it was. And part of what you just said, they said like, so now that person's furious and family's involved in furious, but somehow even with all of this other stuff, it's like now that stuff over there and they still somehow feel more at peace, even after what seemed like a bunch of dramatic nonsense and all of this, but now at least it feels like that stuff over there. And I, I was shocked to see like, and now I actually feel more at peace even with all this going on, because it, at least I don't have that, you know, either relationship or you can be in the relationship with me. It's just going to be in these, these are my, my terms, my boundaries for it. That is an amazing example. And I love that how it's like, yeah, now, yes, all that chaos is still happening, but this person can be separated from it and that it does feel so much better. And I mean, if, if you take one thing away today, it's that you deserve to take care of yourself. You deserve to show up for yourself and speak up for yourself. You deserve it. You deserve that. Okay, so there are so many more questions, Carissa, but I want to make sure we get, I know you have one last thing before you kind of set us, send us all off. I want to remind everybody that if you have not yet pulled out your phone and either connected here with Carissa, get that, that code through. Um, I did send, and Ella has in the chat, the link to today's um, handout. We want to make sure you're connecting with Carissa because I think there are so many of you who are saying, if you if you can't in, in the wise words of Beatrice, if you can't follow no rules, if you can't follow no shirt, no shoes, no service, those are the basic rules of this establishment. You can still eat out on the sidewalk. I love that. Like you can still go yes. eat, but these are how I'm going to function. And so many of you are trying to figure out how to get yourself to that place. And I think Carissa, you're having these conversations in your community. As you said, you provide service outside of here. So for those of you whose questions I can't get to, I apologize, but I think many of you, this is hitting home for you as well. Let's make sure that you're reaching out to Carissa, getting connected and finding a way to Again, not you said not go from zero to a hundred, but like, what are the next places that I can put some of these things? And fences are big; they don't get built okay. overnight. They're section by section, and they're heavy, and they're so there are. This isn't a just overnight. You don't listen to this one hour. That's it's right. So. It's not a so. magic pill. I wish it was. I wish yeah, it was. So, first of all, there are quite a few questions, but I, I think we'll have to have them kind of reach out, reach out to you. Yeah, you're welcome to reach out from, to me. And just as we close here, again, I just want to remind you that you deserve to ask for what you want and need. You also deserve to have time away from work and to make that time sacred. And you deserve to live a full and joyful life that you are in charge of. So I invite you now to think about how it might change your life if you start setting some of these boundaries and if you create a stronger boundary between your work life and your personal life. So think about how it might change your life and then think of just the one next step that you need to take in order to make that change. Just the one next step it can be a baby step. And if you have a piece of paper and a pen near you, just write down, write it down, that one next step. And in this moment, right now, make a commitment. Make a commitment to you. Make a commitment to taking just that one next step. And remember the words of Dolly Parton, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. And in order to make a life that is yours, speak up and set your boundaries. Oh, Carissa, thank you so much. We appreciate this. I know that this topic transcends all of our people joining from different companies and different levels of their career, and certainly for all of us in our personal life. So we appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today. Go on, sign up for her guide. Again, all of you with your tons of additional questions. Sounds like there's a lot of this conversation going on in, in Carissa's channel. So thank you so much, Carissa. We appreciate having you on today. Oh, this has been such a pleasure and such a joy to talk about this. Thank you, each one of you. Thank you for being here with me. Absolutely. Thanks all. We'll see you next month.